Hi, my name's Steve Hewitt. I'm a global leader within Capgemini focused on retail experience transformation. And I'm really excited to share with you a unique partnership that we formed with The Drum and with Sharp End called The Corner Shop, a store of tomorrow. While everyone's been talking about sort of the death of retail, the death of the store, we've been busy thinking up what does the future store need to look like to survive in the world the other side of this pandemic? We're on a mission to prove that retail still rocks and I want to share with you where we got to with the corner shop. We're not quite ready yet, um, so this is a bit of a sneak peek preview behind the scenes before we look to open at the end of January. So come on inside and I'll, and I'll show you what we've been working on. So welcome NRF inside the corner shop. Gordon? Steve, how are you doing? Hey Steve, good, good to see you. Good. Um, so this is the entrance to, to corner shop. Um, Rob, do you want to just say hello to, to our audience and tell us a little bit about Corner Shop and how it came to be? We would love to. So I'm Rob Holland. I'm managing director um, at an agency called Sharpend. We're an Internet of Things specialist agency um, and the world's first agency of things. And we, we're really on a mission to look at how we can connect consumer and brands. Um, and we've done lots of work with clients where we've built lab spaces into their organisations. And Corner Shop really came about as a, as a place that we could take public. We could sit it in the heart of a really interesting district um, and bring live consumers into a space to test and learn with brands and other partners. Brilliant. And, and Gordon, this Corner Shop is part of the Drum Labs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my name is Gordon Young and I'm co-founder of the Drum, which is the, one of the world's largest marketing and media websites. And I'm also co-founder of the Drum Labs, uh, and obviously Corner Shop is our most important partner here. But really what the Drum Labs is about is helping our readers understand the new normal and really understanding how the digital world is going to affect the material world. So we really want to be find an interface between the physical and the digital realms and allow us readers, readers to touch new ideas and actually see how the physical world is going to change as well. And and I guess the, the corner shop, the way we think about the corner shop, we call it like the four corners of the corner shop. And what we're trying to do in each of these is explore some future fundamental of shopping in the new normal. Um, and, and here we are at the entrance. And this is the corner where really we're exploring the idea of like the personalized shop. Every shopping experience in the future needs to be personalized, but how to make that actually meaningful um, and relevant, that's the trick. Rob, can you talk, um, talk NRF through some of the concepts that we're exploring here? Yeah, absolutely. So you'll, you'll enter the corner shop. If it's your first time in the space, there'll be a, a quick onboarding process. Um, but once you then come back, we'll know exactly who you are and we'll tailor and personalise the whole experience, whether that's the audio that's playing in the store, whether that's the, the lights, the things that you're seeing on screens. And then when you're in each of the zones that you've mentioned, those zones will adapt to what we know about you, what you purchased before, what your preferences are. Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting space for that. Uh, and I think we've talked about it, but the, the user's device, that personal device that's safe to them and personal to them, will almost act as a remote control for this space as, as they operate throughout it. Yeah, and I think that the really interesting thing for us is this idea of like value exchange with, with personalization. It's all about our customers sharing a bit of data about themselves that we can then use to personalize their experience. But that creates exciting opportunities then for, for brands and for marketing, Gordon, doesn't it? Absolutely, and I think uh, it's fair to say that one of the fastest growing trends over uh, the pandemic has been experience. As more and more brands have had to sort of go online, the whole digital experience has become really important. And it's fair to say now that is beginning to move into the physical realm as well. Uh, and brands now have so much personal insight, so much personal data, they really have no excuse for just, uh, you know, not to try and personalise the physical experience too. So brilliant. So our customers will walk in, they'll be personalised as they come in, they'll be changing the wall art to what they like. Come and join us in the next area of the store. So, so this is the part of the store that we call purposeful shopping. So in here, we're really exploring how do future shopping missions help enable customers to fulfill goals, missions. Um, and what we've looked at is food shopping, grocery. And if you were to sort of wipe the slate clean and then rebuild from scratch a truly omni-channel purpose-led grocery shop, what would it look like? Rob, can you, can you sort of talk us through some of the sort of shopping journeys that we're bringing to life here? 
Yeah, definitely. And I think the, one of the really interesting things for me is we've gone more and more online. We've got very used to the intelligence and the experience we have there. And as we come back out again into the real world, into the physical world, we're going to expect some of those journeys to come together. And that's where you talk about omnichannel. Um, and that's exactly what this space is doing. You'll be able to start something out of the store in your home, start building a basket, come into the store and intelligently know you're there and bring that basket into this interface. We're merging physical shelving with digital shelving. Um, our consumers' lives have become connected. We're looking at connected products. We're seeing a big trend around connected packaging, which we specialize in. So any of the packs here you can interact with, you can understand product information, ingredients, transparency, um, all from a tap or, or a scan of that pack. One of the things that I'm really excited about is I think we finally found a use case for AR in shopping that isn't a gimmick. Um, so we're asking customers to share their, their personal goals, whether that's about lifestyle or dietary need or planet. So they'll tell us they're vegan. They'll tell us they want low carbon. Um, and we will use AR to guide them across the store to the shelves using AR to physically tell them which products meet their goals. And I think it's a really fascinating new channel opportunity for marketeers as you know, AR becomes a, a part of the shopping journey, Gordon. Absolutely, and I think it's also a big opportunity for retailers to understand what sort of floor space they might require in the future, because you might be able to uh, start fitting these really sort of big concepts into relatively small spaces, and also uh, use it as a way of actually having a retail space that combines all sorts of different concepts, whether that's food, grocery, you know, all sorts of different experiences in one space, so it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, and, and I guess the other like really interesting aspect here is we're exploring, you know, how do you bring the ultimate in freshness and experience to consumers? So we're working with a vertical farm specialist to create, I think, the world's first sort of pay by the pick in-store grown um, shopping experience. For definite, yeah, our, our partner, a company called Wall Farm, um, and as Steve says, it will be a really interesting installation. And the other thing is, we, we've talked about this being a publicly open space. This is all fully shoppable. You will be able to come in and pick some fresh herbs. You will be able to take products off the shelf and buy them. Um, and that, for me, that's an interesting. We're going to be able to test and learn in, in the real world, which is, which is super exciting. Great. Let's move on. So the, the store is fully equipped with sensors, with beacons, with video analytics. And one of the other unique things about this store is we're almost opening the book on that insight. So on public display, it's going to be all of the learnings that this store is making for, for our customers, for our clients to come and engage with. Um, so no longer sort of insight lurking away, hidden in the back office. We're sharing with the world, you know, what does a smart store really know and learn about you? And how can you use that to the advantage of customers and to the advantage of retail and brand? And here is the third corner of the corner shop. Um, and in here, we're really exploring another key tenant of future shopping, automation. You know, how do you strike that right balance between automating an experience and providing an experience that's actually engaging? Rob, do you want to talk to us a bit of us? Yeah, as you say, I think this is a really exciting space. Now, we're going to have to use some vision here with us as it's being installed next week. We'll, we will have a, a significant future of coffee type experience and, and, and then the ability to have um, other drinks as well, soft drinks in here, but fully contactless. And a lot of what our teams have been working on is how we can, you know, we're putting technology in here, we're automating things, we're taking humans out of the experience, but actually what can we layer back in to, to make it still feel personalized, to make it still feel human, um, to bring the craft and the, the, the wonderful things you, you get with those interactions. So, so I'm really excited to see how we, we bring that stuff together whether that's your name on a cup, whether that's the story of the, the, the coffee and, and where the coffee came from, or just understanding how to create that, that, that perfect coffee. Uh, so there'll be some wonderful contactless snack and quick serve type experiences in this area. Great, and, and, and Gordon, you know, one of the other things that we're looking to do is like share exclusive drum, uh, drum content in this space. So, you know, how, how is the drum gonna leverage, you know, all the things that we learn here to the, to the benefit of your customers? Well, we are going to base an awful lot of our stories and articles on the experiences in the shop because, uh, as you see, it is a lab. It's a, a real life experience. We're going to have real consumers in here. Uh, we don't know how they're going to respond or you know, what's going to work and what's not going to work, but it's going to be fascinating to find out. 
Uh, but what I love about this space is, uh, you, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of automation, a lot of machinery. I mean, this, this system is a good example. It looks small on the surface, lots of facial recognition, but underneath there's a huge, huge piece of kit. But despite all automation, despite all the technology, it's still a very sort of personal, real life experience for people. So I think it's an example of actually how you can use technology to create a new sort of social experience in the real world, which actually brings people together. Brilliant. Let's go to the fourth and final corner of the corner shop. So this area is gonna be where more of the pop-up area. Um, we're gonna start with fashion and we're really exploring augmentation as a future fundamental of shopping experience. How do we do stuff that was not possible before by leveraging technology? This will be full of clothing, connected clothing on a connected rail to let us really enrich the product browse experience. Um, you know, seeing the tangibility of a real product but overlaying it with all of the rich extra content that, that digital enables. Right. So here's our virtual try-on experience. So this is where we're looking to solve fashion's challenge with like fit and look confidence in a world right now where you can't try on clothing in stores because of hygiene concerns, but also the challenge that existed before COVID when buying clothing outside of the store. How can technology augment an experience and solve those pain points? So we've, um, we've connected the clothing um, in the store um, so that when you pick up an item, we intelligently know you're picking up that item and we can change the messaging and the screen, screens around it. But also when you walk up to the virtual try on screen, it will automatically know the item that you've got in your hand. And this is one of the insights that consumers do still want to feel the material, they want to understand the sizing, they want the product in their hand, but they don't want the friction point of trying something on. And this totally, totally removes that. Um, and the other thing that we have is post-purchase, we've connected the items so that we can see that whole second life. We can allow consumers to tap on or engage with the clothing um, in their own time, in their own space, or in this case, potentially in a stadium and deliver different experiences, but also understand that second life of the item. And lots of the things that we're flowing through the, the store are about circular economy, about sustainability. They're addressing other, other challenges. Yeah, so one of the other concepts that we'll have in the space is a thing called Circle, um, and it's where we're going to partner with charities so that when um, consumers have used the clothing as much as they want, they can bring it in and we're going to use computer vision to automatically assess, is this a product that would be useful to the charity? And if so, is it in good enough condition? Um, and then we can do our part in the circular economy by putting some of this clothing back out there. Um, and I think, you know, this is a great example for me, Gordon, of how you know, computers are starting to help us generate content as well. You know, this virtual version of you wearing stuff and the possibilities that opens up more broadly. Yeah, it's, very, it's actually very exciting in my view because you, you do have this sort of movement where we're actually creating brand new experiences. So on one hand, you've got your, your virtual sort of, uh, you know, sort of model in the system and you can have a private experience, but you can also come here and have a very social experience. So we're not only solving problems such as uh, you know infection control, but also creating brand new experiences for, for people where they could come to a place like this, they can maybe engage in a cup of coffee, uh, and while they're here, they can sort of try on clothes. And I think that's going to be very interesting retailers going forward, actually, as an opportunity to use technology to actually redefine the retail experience. Well, there you have it. <clears throat> the four corners of the corner shop, um, the world's first store built for the new normal. Um, we got to get back to it. We've set ourselves the ambition to be open, to invite you to come into our stores um, at the end of January. So through the, through the magic of video, we're going to fast forward now to uh, January the 21st. Did we make it? See you soon. Hello, NRF, um, and welcome to the corner shop. Uh, pleased to say we did make it. Despite COVID's best efforts to slow us down, we are pretty much ready to open now as soon as UK government lets us um, and it's socially responsible to do so. Maybe, uh, maybe if we could get a quick pan of the store so that um, you can believe us. Um, it's come on a long way um, since we shot that video for you uh, just before Christmas. Um, just to recap, this is a collaboration between Capgemini, Sharp End and The Drum. Um, this is a shop. We are opening to customers as soon as we can. We've got a whole bunch of concepts that hopefully you were just excited to learn about that, that we believe represent the future of shopping. Uh, some of these are going to work. Some of these aren't going to work. This shop is a live lab. 
Um, and that's just the start of the concepts that we, that we hope to build in the space. And um, looking forward to, to taking some of your questions. So let's, yeah, let's get into it. Um, Rob, we've we got, we got a question around this shop's mixing a whole bunch of different categories. Do we, do we think that's where retail is going, this sort of convergence of categories? Yeah, uh, really good question. Um, you know, corner shop being a place where lots of things come together, mum and pup stores in the, in the US is a good comparison. Um, I think there is opportunities for that. I think for us in this space, this is very much about how can we test and learn across different verticals, across different industries. Um, and I think some of the things we will learn is that shoppers do want to come to one place to make a grocery purchase and pick up other items and have a coffee and experience some content. So I think we will see some convergence, but that's not, not really what we set out um, to, to achieve here. Great, thank you. Yeah, and another question is, what do we say to people who think that physical retail doesn't really have a place in today's world of online shopping? I mean, I think that to some degree, if you think about retail as just selling products, then I would, I would agree, you know, stores days as a place just to come and buy something probably are a little bit numbered, but shopping has always been about more than just the function of buying a product. And I think what we see happening is the role of the store dialing up the other parts of shopping, which is actually experience and, you know, society and connecting with people and learning. So, you know, shops will always have a place to sell stuff still when you, you're walking by in an unfamiliar place and you want to grab something or, you know, to really enable local fulfillment. Um, but I think, you know, that's going to be the, the minority of the role. The majority is going to be really majoring on experience and, and you know, entertainment and retainment and things like this. Um, we've got another question, Gordon, around, you know, how we see sort of the world of retail and brand coming together and the sort of opportunities for brand marketing in spaces like this? Well, I think, as you've already said, I think experience is an operative word. Uh, and I think brands will be looking to offer new and interesting experiences to their consumers, whether that's either in an online space or in an offline space. And, you know, I think retail is going to play a really fundamental part of that, you know, I think retail is going to be about offering the brands real experiences where the consumers can get engaged, enjoy themselves and see the brands in various dimensions, so to speak. Okay, thank you, Gordon. Um, another question, in this kind of world, what would be the sales staff role? I mean, I think that's a great, it's a great question. I guess that there is the this great fear, I guess, that automation is going to come at the displacement of thousands and thousands of frontline staff. But, you know, that, that's not the way that we certainly see the world. We, we definitely see automation as starting to take away some of the more functional roles that occupy, you know, too much of staff's time today, checking when stock is available, um, you know, doing a manning checkouts. Here, we've tried to automate as much of that as possible. So, you know, we've implemented contactless checkouts so that people can just come in, grab stuff and literally leave the store. Um, and our technologies will know what they've added to the basket and we'll, we'll check them out. Um, we're trying to like retain the role of staff though and use technology to sort of provide more experience so that staff can greet customers and, and know them. So as staff um, are approached by customers in our store, um, we'll know when they're members, the staff will see a sort of screen pop of their avatar. It will we'll understand what they've bought and what they've engaged with us before. Um, and we're really about empowering colleagues to deliver better experiences um, and taking away some of the more mundane tasks that occupy a lot of people's time at the moment. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd say that, Steve, as well. We, we, we've approached it very much. We've taken all of the staff out. We've tried to automate as much as we can in space. And now we're layering staff back in to deliver exactly, as you say, that experience. Where's the right role where you know humans do things brilliantly? That social aspect, that experience aspect, that we're certainly not trying to automate or put machines in to, to do that. Thanks, Rob. Um, we've got a few questions around sort of QR codes um, and the role that they're playing in the store. Um, 
Yeah, we I mean, QR code, you know, is a core, core part of the shopping business. We do a lot of work in the QR code space. We're part SaaS business delivering a platform that issues those types of identities. I think whether it's QR, whether it's NFC, we're using that to provide a frictionless uh, touch point across whether it's you're interacting with the packaging by connected packaging and QR codes on the pack, or your initial start of your journey in the store, where you'll come on and fully on board by the scan of a, a QR code or the, the tap of an NFC tag. Um, we have a question here. Um, we, we mentioned touchless, but we show big touch screens. Yeah, I mean, it, we had a lot of debate about this one. Um, you know, we, we designed and we built this through, through lockdowns. Um, and we were always trying to strike the right balance between what's going to be here to stay as a consequence of the behavior shifts that we've had versus, you know, what is going to revert back afterwards. And there was something around still having some sort of tactile, you know, interaction. It's one of the reasons you go to a physical store for physical connection in some way. So we didn't want to move entirely away from touch. We wanted to be able to dial down touch when we need to and dial it up. So yeah, you can control the, the screens without having to touch them. So you can have complete touchless if you want. We actually at the moment think that it's gonna be some sort of hybrid experience. So when you come to these screens, it will, without you touching it, recognize you. Um, we use proximity technology to do that. You then sort of connect to your phone. Um, you engage with the screen either through touch or your phone. And then you can kind of continue the transaction back on your phone again. Um, so, you know, we don't expose on a big screen, for example, when you're entering payment details, you know, that all happens back on your phone. Uh, because, you know, a core idea of the space is actually that the, the phone is your remote control. You know, your mobile phone is how you use all parts of this space. So we've tried to keep a lot of interaction on that, but we still think there is a place for touch in retail. Um, it's just clearly right now, um, you know, you, you minimize that to the, to the extent that you can. Yeah, no, I think on that, this will be one of the first stores to open in a kind of, uh, maybe not a post COVID world, but certainly one of the first stores built fully with an understanding of what's going on. So whether it is a contactless coffee or the ability to come in and try on some clothing without ever touching that clothing by a virtual trial, uh, I think we're testing some really interesting concepts in that space. We, we have another question here around, um, in the industry, there's a lot of talk about merging, blending online and offline worlds, but what opportunity do we think exists to blend offline to offline, i.e. connected packaging to store experience? Um, I mean, I, obviously, omnichannel is a huge topic at the minute, um, and I think we're, we're doing that exactly here, and, and not just online and offline worlds, but actually in the home worlds, by a connected home, on the street, in the store. We're trying to marry all those worlds up. So you can start the experience at home or in your office. You can then be out in the street. You might join a virtual queue um, outside the store. And then you can come into the store and know exactly what's already in your basket um, or what products you've been connecting with or interacting with in your home. So I think moving towards that, you know, it's not about whether it's offline versus offline or omni-channel online on offline stuff it's actually just wherever you are wherever you're interacting on whatever channel this intelligence store is going to know about that yeah there's no distinction really between the, the offline and the, the digital realms they really are coming together and that's i think how we have to see it and that's a big driver there's not a distinction for consumers so if there's not a distinction for consumers then brands retailers can't try and put those distinctions in or try to isolate particular channels it's it's one shopping experience or one brand experience across lots of different channels. We've got a question, Gordon, about um, Drum Labs. And, you know, is, is there only one in, in London? Is there plans to, to, to open Drum Labs in, in other locations? Well, to be honest with you, uh, ideally we'd love to say we're going to open lots of uh, locations, but I think we're going to maybe walk before we run, uh, focus on getting this one open and getting it right. Uh, but we are looking forward to developing it, working obviously with the uh, you know the you know the future of retail we're also going to be looking at the future of work the future of entertainment we can do all sorts of stuff here uh, but the main thing from us is we can do experiments here and then we can talk about them uh, globally so this is a, a london uh, you know a london uh, project at the moment but we're hoping to start a global conversation uh, so we're very we'd be delighted to engage some of you guys as well so if you have any ideas or anything you'd like us to do or look at feel free to get in touch 
Um, a question around the different technologies intended to operate standalone or interact with one another. Um, so both, I guess, is the answer to that. We've, we've built all of these concepts to represent you know, a specific um, category in isolation, um, but we've also built them all to talk to each other, you know, particularly around the data. So underpinning the, the corner shop is um, a set of pretty powerful platforms to drive the commerce, to drive the data, to drive the marketing, um, and all of the concepts, you know, revolve as you would expect around sort of single customer view that we build out. It gets enriched by all of the sorts of really interesting interactions we get in the store from the selfies people take to the stuff they try on um, in the, the fashion area to the products that they QR scan to the aisles that they virtually scroll to. Um, so, so yeah, so they aren't, you know, this is Rob said at the start, this isn't necessarily us saying this is the next format for a retail store, the, the corner shop is the next Walmart. Um, our ambition with this space is more that the concepts within it come together in different categories in different ways to, to create those future concepts and therefore the technologies that we've built have been enabled to do that. Um, Rob, uh, a question on how can a brand or retailer get involved in Corner Shop? Go on. Very easily. We, we, we'd love for retail and brand partners. We've got some fantastic launch brands um, supporting us already. Um, there's definitely space for more to come in. And I'd say in a few different ways. I think this is a hugely inspiring space to come to when it's safe to, to do so um, and be inspired and test new technologies and look at things that might be applicable to your brands or your stores or locations. So I think that's one way to get involved. I think there's a real opportunity to test and learn. Um, I think lots of retailers, lots of clients have lab spaces kind of locked away in their buildings or locations. I think this is a live lab space. So if you've got proof of concepts, if you have ideas that you'd like to see realized in the real world, I think this is a perfect space to test those, to tie into all of the great data points that we're collecting and get some real insights um, and learnings. And then I think if, there, if there's concepts that you want to work with us as a team to explore um, and bring to life, whether we do that through hackathons in the space, partnering with the drum to, to kind of source some of that great ideation and then test and learn it here. I think lots of ways to get involved and we give us a shout, we, we'd love to love to partner up. Yeah, and remember, if you do get involved, the drum would love to tell your stories as well. So the whole thing about this collaboration is, you know, gaining knowledge and then sharing that knowledge through the drum, uh, which is one of the largest marketing platforms in the world. Excellent. Um, we're close to time. Uh, probably can do one more question. So I'll, essentially, we have a question here around, will the concepts change over time? I mean, hopefully um, you've got a sense from the answers we've given already. Absolutely, yes. We, we started with these concepts. They were the result of um, work that we did where we pulled all of the insights that we have across of our, our businesses, our creative teams, our strategy teams, our engineer teams. Um, and we built our view around where future retail is going. Um, and as I said, you know, I'm sure some of these aren't perfect and we'll learn as customers start to come in and use it. Um, and as we collaborate further, we will be introducing new concepts. So this space will stay very dynamic and be changing throughout the year. Okay, we've got two minutes left. Um, I think we have answered all of the questions that I can see. So um, thank you very much, everyone, for taking up some of your valuable time to, to share a bit of the Corner Shop journey with us. We hope you've been inspired. We hope you're as excited about the potential for the future of retail. Um, we sure are. Um, and we plan to continue to explore and define it together here in London in the Corner Shop. Hope to see you soon. Thank you all.